Hey everybody, welcome to Passionate About Music Education and I'm Rachel Hardman and today's episode is for new teachers or teachers changing uh, schools for September. So new teachers, congratulations on your first teaching job. So exciting and you're going to have an amazing time and you're going to make a difference to many students' lives. So however hard and challenging the year ahead may well be, remember that you are there and you will be there making a difference to students. So today's advice is some tips for you to consider as a new teacher or a teacher change into a new school. And it doesn't matter whether you've been teaching for a long time or a short amount of time, these tips will hopefully help you. Tip number one is what you need to make sure to do is get the photocopier code. Okay, and get somebody to show you A, where the photocopier is and B, how the photocopier works. And essential when you know you're going to do a lot of photocopying and you're going to do worksheets is to know the photocopier code. You'll need that fairly quickly on arriving to the school. Tip two is to make sure that you get access to the computer systems within your school. So that could be your email account, to log on to get onto the computer. It could be getting your... Um, ISAMs or SIMS or PowerSchool or any of these systems, a login, you should be able to get this information directly from the IT help desk or the IT department or your line manager or the HR department. But you will need that information fairly quickly so you can access the school server. In terms of email, make sure that you are following the school procedure on emailing and that you're using the school signature or whatever it is that you know is expected. Remember, you're sending them out professionally to parents and, and the community. And the school email is really handy to share information, particularly with students. So um, a lot of students now have the school email and the school will set that up for them so that you can email students directly about clubs and rehearsals, um, instrumental timetables, homework assignments. Remember to keep it professional and remember not to email them on their home email or from your home email. Um, but making sure that you get all of that email and computer logons information is really important, particularly in the very beginning, first couple of days of being in school. Tip three, know where the toilets are and the staff room rules. So make sure you know who sits where and whether you need to bring a cup, whether you need to bring your own tea bags, your own coffee, your own milk, or whether you contribute a fund or whether uh, the school provides it. That kind of information is really helpful. Um, I would suggest that you have your own cup and your own water bottle. It's always handy to have. Um, tip four is to make friends with the receptionist, the office staff, with the finance department, and of course the site team. You will need to help them help you lots throughout the school year. And if you build a good relationship with these members of staff, then they will be more than happy to help you. Remember, they're part of the school team. And I could not do my job without the assistance of the uh, site team. They move equipment for me and music stands, and they're fantastic. So my relationship with them is really important. So um, make sure you build relationships with these members of staff. Uh, tip five is to make friends with members of staff who are not in your department. Obviously make friends with the department, but also make sure you get to work with colleagues outside of your subject area. Um, it's really good because you get to meet new friends and you also get to bounce new ideas around and they'll have different behaviour strategies and lesson plan ideas that you can bring into your own areas. It's really good to get to know members of staff across the whole school. Number six, make sure you know the rules for ordering. We all need to order equipment or books or stationary from different points of throughout the year make sure you know what that policy is how to do it who has to sign it off whether you're a, as a head of department allowed to do it or whether you have to get that approved by a line manager or the finance office find out what that procedure is um, so that you can either claim money back when you have bought something for the school or for your department or for your curriculum 
or how do you order you know, music stands and music books and various other equipment that you'll need. My advice is always to try and do the research of what you want and get a quote from a music shop before you go to the finance department. You're more likely to get what you want and you will have made their job so much easier because they won't then have to try and find a music shop and what you, a piece of equipment you want. Rule seven, learn the uh, school cover rota and duty rota and what's expected of you. Part of teaching is that you will have to do some form of duty and you will also have to do some form of cover. We all do it and at some point you will need cover if you're off sick or if you're doing a concert and it's an all day rehearsal and you need colleagues to cover your classes while you're working with your band or your choir. So make sure that you know how that system works and what's expected are you to and how you find the information about being on cover and where you go do you go to a specific room do you go to the classroom and do the work with the class in that teacher's classroom or can you bring them back to your own classroom find out that information pretty early on because it will make the whole cover process a lot easier and the next tip is stationary supplies make sure you have plenty of stationary supplies and we often think that we should supply them but you'll find that school has stationary and Again, your office staff or your finance department will be able to tell you how this works. And each school is different. Some schools will order in a batch because it's cheaper to buy it in, which means you can just go and get it from a central storage room. Some schools will ask you to buy it as a department, so you might need to go to your line manager and say, hey, I need some board pens or I need some you know, exercise books. You should, or you might have to go and buy it yourself and then claim back. Whichever way you do it, you should be able to have stationery within your department and be able to get access to that. So find out how do you get you know, your pencils, which band musicians always need. We always need that are plenty of pencils in our room for notes on music. Uh, number nine, build a relationship with your instrument team and your music service. So if you're like me and you were in the UK, we used to have lots of instrumental teachers come into the school and teach you know, half a day of singing or half a day of piano, and students would come out of lessons and they would go to those teachers and have their one-on-one -on -one clarinet lesson or saxophone lesson or whatever the instrument they're learning. These teachers are absolute gold in your department and they are so important and they make such a difference to your programme. So look after them. Remember, if you're only popping in and out for half an hour and you're going to 30 schools, you want to feel like you belong somewhere because it's quite a lonely job. So make sure that you copy them in on school calendars or any sort of general information that will help them know what's going on in school. If there's a... Um, photographs being taken that might impact the day that they come in share that information they are really appreciative of this um, your instrumental teachers and they will be much more organized for you and much more uh, supportive if you do that and if you're doing exam classes like GCSE IB A level it's really good to share the documents and the deadlines with those teachers so if I had a student in my GCSE class and they were taking guitar lesson I would talk with the guitar teacher about what the expectation is of the solo and the ensemble so that they had plenty of time to work on that with the student and I would also talk to them about the curric curriculum and what the you know exam criteria assessment is and I would share those documents and I would talk to them about it because if they understand what's in the GCSE academic curriculum they'll be able to support it more effectively in the lessons it's it's really important that you share that information with those teachers for that to be successful and it's really important to support the local music service or the music hub. And again, it depends where you live in the world, but they, they again are really important. You want your students to come out of your school bands and go and join the county groups or the music hub ensemble or go and play, sing in the choir or sing in the, uh, play in the orchestra. Those are really amazing experiences for students. And it's great for your school to network back and forth. And music hubs do offer a lot of CPD and opportunity for training. So there's a, a chance for you to network and know other people in the area. And my last tip is to build a relationship with your local music shop. You want your students to go and support the local music shop. You want them to go and buy reeds or strings or um, music books from the local music shop. So it's really important that the music shop knows what you're kind of recommending. So if you're a, you know, 
clarinetist and you want to get students to buy a certain reed and a certain strength, it's important that that music shop knows that's what you're going to be recommending on a daily basis or a weekly basis. So they can have that in stock. And the same on specific types of books. It means that they have stock that they will be able to sell. It also means that when parents and students go in, particularly for that first time and they don't really know what they're doing, that music shop can help them and that whole experience is more successful. Remember your parents, if they're um, if their child's learning an instrument and is a beginner, they won't know what read or what book. So make sure you communicate that to them as well. Because the more you make that beginning experience successful and you support you know, those links, that will make it uh, that m it's more likely that student will continue learning that instrument going forward. So re really build that link with your music shop and you might even find that they offer you a really good discount as well. So the music shops that I've had good relationships with also have given me great discount which benefits my school, which also benefits the music department, the children, it means I can get more resources quick quickly into the department. I really hope these tips have been helpful and give you some ideas of, of the areas you need to think about as you arrive at your new job or if you're going to a new school. Uh, and again, you know, having been to a new school a couple of times in my career, actually getting the email and getting logons and how the photocopy works and the rules of the staff room are, are really important. So if you're starting a new job this year and you're new to the profession, really good luck and, and I hope it all goes really well. I'm Rachel Hardman and this is Passionate About Music Education. If this has been helpful, please leave a comment below. Please subscribe to the channel. Please, if there's anything you would like more information on, for me to go into more detail, please leave a comment and I will do read them and I will get back to you. Thanks very much. It's passionate about music education.